The next sequence of videos we're going to go through deal with a balanced three-phase power. My name is Lee Brinton, and I'm an electrical engineering instructor at Salt Lake Community College. The vast majority of the electrical power used in America is generated by turning the shaft of a generator. That shaft may be turned by a number of different forces, either by steam or gas, water, a heat engine, or even wind. The steam may be generated by burning coal, natural gas, nuclear reaction, or concentrating the sun's energy. But the vast majority of the electrical generators in the, in the world are three-phase generators. In this next sequence of videos, we'll study the electric circuits driven by what are referred to as balanced three-phase sources. In these va videos on balanced three-phase power, we will be analyzing circuits consisting of generators, transmission lines, and balanced three-phase loads. Electricity is frequently generated some distance from the population centers where it's going to be used. The power is typically transported from one place to another at high voltages along a complex connection of transmission lines. We refer to that as the power grid. This is a map of the uh, power grid here in the United States. You'll notice the concentration of power lines, transmission lines, and generating facilities in the high density population areas of the United States. Out here in the west where I live, and populations are more dispersed, we don't have nearly the infrastructure in power lines. Yet it's interesting to note that out here in the west we have large resources of renewable energy, both wind, solar, and geothermal. One of the challenges in, in getting more renewable energy usage or in, in introducing more renewable energy into the nation's energy portfolio is um, transmission. We just don't have the transmission infrastructure to get the power from the places where the renewable energy exists out here in the West back to the larger um, population centers where the higher energy consumption is in the East. An AC electrical generator consists of a magnet connected to a shaft where the shaft is turned by some primary force. That primary force, as we mentioned, could be some mechanical thing like uh, wind or steam. As the magnet rotates between these stationary coils, the magnetic flux of the magnet intersects the coils and generates an electric potential or voltage between the two ends of the wire. So you get a positive and negative um, voltage established between the two ends of those coils. As the magnet continues to rotate, the direction of the field reverses. So what was north and south this way, as it rotates around, then becomes south and north, causing the polarity of the voltage to alternate at a frequency equal to the rate of rotation. In the United States, generators are designed to rotate 60 times a second, or 3,600 revolutions per minute. And it generates a, a voltage that oscillates at 60 times a second, or what we, what we refer to as 60 cycle per second, or 60 hertz. When the magnetic field is directly aligned with the stationary windings, the maximum voltage is generated. So when the magnet is lined up with the coils directly, you get the peak voltage. When the, magnetic, when the magnetic field is directed uh, perpendicular, so it's rotated a quarter of a turn, so that the, the magnet is now out of the plane of this page, none of the flux intersects the coils, and at that instant you have zero voltage um, being generated. And so as this turns around and around and around, 60 times a second, we generate a potential here that alternates 60 times a second, going from a maximum voltage when, it's, when the coil is, or when the magnet is directly aligned with the coil, going through a zero voltage when the magnet is perpendicular to the coils, on down to a negative voltage when the polarity of the magnet is rever reversed, and on back. Thus, we've got the generation of an AC signal. With only one set of windings rotating, the rotating field is maximally coupled a relatively small percentage of the time it takes to rotate to the 360 degrees. And when it's perpendicular to the winding, no potential is generated. 
By evenly spacing two additional stationary coils around the rotating magnet, three different voltages are, are generated, thus continually coupling the field through the entire rotation. So what we have here are three separate coils. One coil oriented like this called the A phase. Another coil here oriented like this called the B phase. And a third coil oriented like this called the C phase. And they're wrapped so as to um, to generate three separate voltages. And you'll notice that they're oriented 120 degrees away from each other, 120 degrees, all three of them, so that the voltage that is generated is likewise, or let's put it this way, the voltage that is generated in the A phase is 120 degrees ahead of the voltage that's generated in the B phase. And the voltage that's generated in the C phase will lag the B phase by 120 degrees. So this magnet goes around and around, generating three separate voltages. The blue phase here, or the blue graph, represents the A phase. And it's generally the case that we choose the A phase, or the phase angle of the A phase. And let's just stop for just a second. It gets a little confusing here. We use the word phase to to refer to a number of different things. Each of these separate voltages is referred to as a phase. Thus, when there's three, three voltages, all the same magnitude and same frequency, they just differ by a phase angle. We call it three phase power. It's referring to three separate voltages. We also talk about the phase angle of each of the phases. So what I'm saying is that the phase angle of the A phase is typically chosen to be zero. And if the shaft is rotating in this direction, then the B phase comes into or peaks 120 degrees after the A phase peaks. And so we say that the B phase would have a phase angle of negative 120. And as it rotates on around, the C phase then is 120 degrees behind the B phase, or typically we'll say then that the C phase leads the A phase by 120 degrees. Although the letter names of these phases are somewhat arbitrary, once we choose them and associate with them, associate a name like the A, the B, or the C phase with one of these phases, we need to stick with it. When we talk about the A phase being, having the angle, let's write it this way, the angle of A equals zero, if the B phase follows along behind that and has a negative 120 degree phase angle, and the C phase follows along behind that and has a negative 240, has a negative 240 degree, or we typically talk about it being a positive 120 degree, if the sequence is this, it is referred to as an A B, C sequence, or a positive sequence. On the other hand, if as we're assigning the letters, we talk about the, or the, the assign the names, which are just letters, if the A phase is zero and directly following the A phase, we have the C phase at, 100, at a minus 120 degrees, and then the B phase coming along, leading the A by, let's see, that's minus 120. And then the B phase coming along behind the C or ahead of the A, we say that it has a positive 120 degree shift. That is referred to as an ACB sequence or a negative sequence. And that's specified by the power company when you've got your electricians out there hooking stuff up. They need to know which phase is, is leading and which phase is lagging. Um, get them backwards and your motor will actually turn in the opposite direction. To summarize then, we have a magnet that's rotating coupling three distinct sets of coils. Because the magnet is intersecting each of these coils at the same frequency, three separate voltages are generated with the same frequencies. 
because the magnet is the same strength and presumably, not presumably, and because the generator is wound with the same number of turns on each one of the stationary windings, the maximum, the voltage amplitudes are going to be the same also. And they differ only by that plus or minus 120 degree phase shift.